The other day, Samsung took a step that at first glance may look like a routine update of its mobile chip lineup, but upon closer analysis appears to mark the beginning of a strategic pivot for the entire company. Exynos 2600 is not just the most advanced mobile processor in Samsung's history. It is the first signal that the South Korean giant is beginning to view its own chips not as smartphone components, but as a new type of universal computing platform capable of extending far beyond pocket devices. The arrival of Exynos 2600 comes at a moment when the industry is facing two crises at once, a crisis of mobile innovation, where smartphones grow more powerful while the user experience barely changes, and a crisis of AI centralization, where nearly all artificial intelligence is concentrated in data centers controlled by a few players, above all, NVIDIA. Judging by the architecture of Exynos 2600, Samsung is attempting to strike at both fronts simultaneously. The key feature of Exynos 2600 lies not only in its 2 nanometers GAA process, but in how that process is used. Instead of allocating transistors solely to CPU or GPU growth, Samsung redistributes the compute budget toward AI blocks, memory, and bandwidth. This is a chip designed not for benchmarks, but for continuous work with neural networks locally, autonomously, and in real time. In essence, Exynos 2600 is an attempt to create a mass-market edge AI processor, something no one has previously done at this scale. This is where the first hidden conflict with NVIDIA emerges. Formally, Exynos 2600 does not compete with server GPUs, but strategically it undermines the very model on which NVIDIA's empire is built, a model where all intelligence lives in the cloud and devices remain mere terminals. If on-device AI becomes a mass standard, billions of devices will begin performing tasks that today require access to data centers, which does not destroy NVIDIA's market, but erodes its monopolistic role as the primary source of AI computation. For Samsung, this opens far broader prospects than the smartphone market alone. Exynos 2600 looks like the first step toward a unified line of chips that could later scale upward into tablets, laptops, AR devices, service robots, smart displays, and autonomous systems. Samsung is one of the few companies in the world that simultaneously controls chip manufacturing, displays, memory, sensors, and end devices. And Exynos 2600 for the first time looks like a node capable of tying all of this into a single computing ecosystem. Against this backdrop, Apple's position becomes especially interesting. Apple traditionally dominates mobile SoCs through vertical integration, but its strategy remains focused on a single class of devices, while Samsung through Exynos 2600 is beginning to play a longer game. If Apple perfects the iPhone as a product, Samsung is trying to rethink the role of the device itself, turning it into a local AI center that does not depend on the cloud and can evolve alongside the user. The Chinese vector is no less important. Companies like Huawei and Xiaomi are actively developing their own chips, but are constrained either by manufacturing sanctions or by dependence on third-party fabs. And in this context, Exynos 2600 becomes Samsung's way of locking in a technological advantage that is difficult to catch up with without access to advanced process nodes and decades of semiconductor expertise. However, this path carries enormous risks, as a 2 nanometer process is not just manufacturing complexity, but a potential source of instability, heat, and scaling issues. And moreover, if Samsung truly views Exynos as a platform beyond smartphones, it will have to compete not only with Apple and Qualcomm, but also with NVIDIA's ecosystem, which is already deeply embedded in AI development, software, and infrastructure, requiring not only strong hardware, but long-term investments in SDKs, tools, and partner ecosystems. And yet it is precisely the scale of this bet that makes Exynos 2600 truly important. This is not a one-season chip and not an attempt to catch up with competitors on raw numbers. It is a shift from mobile thinking to computational thinking, where the smartphone is only one form of realization. If Samsung's strategy succeeds, 
Exynos 2600 may be remembered as the moment when the company began transforming from a device manufacturer into an architect of distributed artificial intelligence. In such a scenario, the question will no longer be whose smartphone is faster, but who controls intelligence at the device level rather than at the server level. And it is here that Samsung for the first time in a long while steps onto a field where its rivals are not only Apple and Chinese brands, but Nvidia itself not yet directly, but along the most fundamental direction of the industry's development. If Exynos 2600 is viewed not as a product but as a signal, it becomes clear that Samsung no longer sees mobile chips as a closed niche. On the contrary, within the company a clearer understanding is forming that the smartphone is merely the first and most massive entry point into a much broader computing ecosystem. In this sense, Exynos 2600 looks like a proving ground through which Samsung is testing an architecture capable of scaling far beyond the familiar mobile market. The key idea underlying this chip is the deconcentration of intelligence. Over the past decade, the industry has moved towards centralization, with more and more computation, data, and models flowing into data centers, while user devices became thin clients dependent on the cloud. Exynos 2600, by contrast, lays the foundation for an alternative model in which intelligence is distributed to the edges of the network, and a smartphone, tablet, or wearable device ceases to be an endpoint and begins to function as an autonomous computing node. This is where a long-term conflict of interests with the server accelerator market starts to take shape. Even if Exynos 2600 never directly appears in data centers, its philosophy undermines the very logic of hypercentralized AI, because the more powerful local chips become, the fewer tasks require calls to remote compute farms, changing the economics of AI, reducing infrastructure load, and gradually shifting the balance of influence from cloud giants to end device manufacturers. For Samsung, this opens a scenario in which the company can become not just a hardware supplier, but an operator of distributed AI infrastructure embedded in billions of devices, an approach fundamentally different from the classic model of licensing or selling compute power, making AI part of everyday user experience, invisible, constant, and tightly linked to personal context. Special attention should be paid to how Exynos 2600 could influence the evolution of software platforms. If local AI becomes the standard, developers are forced to rethink application architectures, creating demand for new SDKs optimized for on-device models, hybrid computing, and dynamic task distribution across devices, giving Samsung a rare opportunity to impose its own tools and standards on the market and secure influence not only at the hardware level, but also at the software level. In this context, the comparison of strategies is especially revealing. Apple traditionally builds a closed ecosystem focused on control and predictability. Chinese brands bet on speed, aggressive pricing, and rapid market share capture, while Samsung through this chip begins to play a third game an infrastructure-level game where decisive importance lies not in sales of a specific model, but in the depth of penetration of a computing architecture across all classes of devices. Exynos 2600 is not a final point, but the beginning of a long chain of decisions that could lead to the formation of a new role for the company in the global technological system, a role in which Samsung ceases to be merely a device manufacturer and becomes an architect of a distributed computing world.